Thank you very much. Hello again. Uh, this is again my same uh, uh, disclosure as before. And what I want to discuss with you is the fact that all those simple interventions are actually a complex system. And how we do the implementation uh, with the program, I will speak a little bit about the costs, which are important also. And I will ask the question if ERAS is for old patients, for example, elderly, and how does it look like in emergency surgery? So this uh, element from ERAS were first published in 2005. And actually you have seen that several times a lot of guidelines and you have seen this in pre, pair and post-operative phase. All these elements are not spectacular, are not uh, fantastic and taken isolately, they are looked like nothing. But if you want to put all them together, this is the difficulty because as it has emphasized before, it is multidisciplinary. You have a lot of uh, different colleagues and actually you should put them together to have an ERAS team sharing those ERAS objectives. And then it's so you take the guidelines, you create an ERAS protocol, uh, we do that through a care map. Care map is like a checklist for the pilots and uh, you will uh, make the patient management. And one of the points, this has to be adapted uh, according to the local habits and to the various hospital because you cannot do the same everywhere, of course. And this is the action plan which has been demonstrated by uh, Ole Lundquist at the beginning. Uh, all those seminars are important to strengthen the multidisciplinary group together. And it's helped to know each other a little bit more and it's allowed also to make some works together and put the elements necessary for errors. And the key of success, this has also been emphasized uh, several times, you need the management, the chair of the department, but also the CEO of the hospital. You need the multidisciplinary team and you need the support. On one side, ideally, it is a dedicated uh, uh, ERAS nurses. You have heard just one before. And uh, you need, of course, the uh, central uh, ERAS support. So the way we have done in Switzerland was teach the teacher, a multidisciplinary approach, a systematic implementation based on the care maps, and we did insist on the audit, and I will show you why in a few moments. And then we started to implement the other hospital. The implementation took part in the University Hospital of Lausanne. This is a thousand bed uh, academic center uh, with all specialties, inclusive transplantation. And we started in colorectal surgery, as usual, by comparing 50 consecutive patients before ERAS and after ERAS. And we thought we were good, but we were not. This is the result pre uh, pre uh, before ERAS. You have the pre and the intraoperative uh, compliance, which is low. And you have the post-operative compliance, which is a catastrophe, about uh, 25%. And accordingly, you see this is the uh, audit uh, system in a benchmark. Uh, you see down uh, the compliance, the number of items used, and you see on the left uh, the, the length of stay. And we were pretty bad. We had a 40% global compliance, and we had a 10 days length of stay for, uh, for a colonic resection. And actually, following the implementation, we improved dramatically. We decreases from 10 to 6 days, and uh, we improve the uh, compliance to almost 80%. And uh, this work was possible with the audit system. Because as mentioned several times before, the more you will use uh, the ERAS the item, the less you will have complication, uh, symptoms, and readmission. And why is it important to check that? It has been also shown by several of the former speakers that the people usually are not sure what they are doing. And the surgeons are not so good they think they are, and they are not so good they claim they are. And uh, obviously some of the so-called enhanced program are not because only few of the elements are really implemented. And we had a good lesson for ourselves and for anesthesiologists. If you look at this, we had 30% post-operative nausea and vomiting. The anesthesiologist didn't want to believe that, but we had a problem. So we started to look at this uh, audit system and uh, we analyzed the outcome, we assessed the anesthesia protocol, we improved the post-operative vom vomiting and nausea uh, prophylaxis, 
and the result was there. Based on 168 patients, we decreased this postoperative nausea vomiting to 10%. This is a dir direct uh, application of the audit system, which allowed you in real time to adapt your clinical pathway to your real results. So that's the, what you are really doing and what's really happening to your patient. So what does it cost? Well, investments cost is implementation course because you do need to learn how to do it properly. It is the access to the ERA database and the audit. I just show you how it work. And the logbook for the patient, carbohydrate drinks, immunonutrition for uh, advanced cancer cases and the salary of the dedicated nurse. The benefits, less complication. I think during the entire day, this has been said. Shorter hospital stay, which is the secondary effect and not the primary goal and then the decreased cost, and the happy patient, it had no price, and of course, the hospital reputation is not bad. We have patients, they heard about that, and they would like to be treated a little better, not to have to fast uh, since midnight to be operated at four o'clock in the afternoon the next day. The hospital administration say, okay, but they want facts, and to get facts in a hospital, the, about the money, this is a very well hidden mo uh, project, especially in Switzerland, you know, how it's work with the money there. But this is the real money, the fixed cost, ERAS implementation program, multidisciplinary tra training, and so forth, you see how it does cost. But then, I showed that already before, we uh, analyzed this real cost. This was a really a policy, a police inquiry by uh, Didier Roulin to find the real cost. And actually, we show that decreases of the complication of the severe complication by half, the hospital stay for uh, colon resection, colon and rectum resection from 10 to six days, and the cost, we decreases $2,000 per patient. So this is cost effective. And, and this is important, if you look at the first paper by Kellett uh, w willing to have the patient home after the second postoperative day, they had 20% readmission rate, which is uh, too much. And we have 2% readmission rate, which is okay. And as you see here, when you apply the ERAS, you have not an increased readmission rate because the length of stay is not the primary goal. What is about the practical implementation? Well, the patient gets an information they need to know what will happen to them and to help the nursing and uh, the doctors to have the, the right stuff. Then they, took, they have a logbook for that and uh, we'll put the data, what's happened to them. And we have this guideline, uh, we, would, we, had to, we want to have that in the daily routine. It's a care map, it's like a checklist for the pilot, and this has to be validated every day by the resident or by the staff uh, to be sure that all the measures apply to the individual patient. And then we have a data collection, uh, we put in the database and that's how we can make research on what we are doing and we can adapt our uh, clinical pathway to the real results of what we are really doing. The question is errors for all patients. Well, I'll give you an example. This is a, a, 40 f a 54 years old guy, he has a right colonic cancer, he need a lap right hemicolectomy, so laparoscopic right hemicolectomy. 16 hour postoperatively was eating, walking, pain free, and he has been going home on the postoperative day three. And of course, this is an, a good patient for an ERAS program. Then look at this lady. She's 94 years old. She had dementia. She has uh, some comorbidities. And she had also a right sided colonic cancer. Well, when I can ask if she's really a good candidate for, uh, for ERAS, what do you think? And tell me, is she a good candidate? From program, yeah. From, from program, yeah. Uh, but I think he's right, because if you look, What's happened to this patient? Well, she had his laparoscopic right hemicolectomy. On the day of surgery, she was out of bed eating. And actually, she did remember she was operated and could be, be, be back in her uh, nursing home at the fourth postoperative day. And what I want to say, this is also an ideal candidate for ERAS. This is one story. How does it look with the data? Well, we have a look at the data. You have here, again, the compliance on the bottom and the length of stay on the left. And you see there is no impact of the age of the compliance. So actually, the age has no influence on compliance, fluid intake, tolerance of solid, functional recovery, and we do no particular treatment for the elderly. On the other hand, 
are there some differences with the type of surgery? And if you look at this line, yes, you will see you have a lower compliance for several operations. Which one? Well, we maybe we did exaggerate a little bit because, of course, we put the rectum, but we put also the HIPEC in the ERAS program. And the HIPEC is pretty tough, 10-hour operation with the... Uh, uh, with the chemotherapy and the hyperthermia, so it's not absolutely easy. Maybe it's uh, fall down the result and the total colectomy as well. So the type of surgery is more important than the age of the patient. And if we look at the compliance, when we had uh, implemented the, the, the ERA system, we have uh, an increase of the compliance and the decrease of the length of stay. Then the next question, why should we not do that to emergency surgery? Because we have a lot of emergency patients. And actually, if you look in PubMed, you have zero hits. So we decided to look at our own data, and this is also preliminary. Study aims was to make a comp comparison between emergency and elective colectomy within an ERAS pathway and uh, to look at the compliance. Of course, for emergency, some of the preoperative item cannot be implemented. But we wanted to look at the, the length of stay and the complication in this patient. And actually, we made a prospective cohort study, and the study period was one year, and we took 28 true emergency colectomy, and we compared a match with uh, 63 elective during the same period. And since last, way, last week, sorry, this is online, uh, the result of this study. I summarize very quickly. Uh, we had uh, a post-operative stay, which was, of course, longer in emergency cases than in elective cases, but we had a low readmission rate, 1%, in both cases. So it was very interesting to do that. If I summarize, we have more comorbidities, we have more open surgery and more stoma in emergency patients, and we have a longer hospitalization, but the compliance is not that bad, almost 60%. So one can apply uh, the emergency uh, surgery, we can apply uh, ERAS program then. So that's the way we have done. Elective colorectal surgery, we started in June 2011. Stomy were added, so the closure of the stomy were added with some particularity in the post-operative course immediately. And we decided to add the emergency colectomies. And the other specialty, pancreas, hepatectomy, uh, were done later. I discussed that before. And interestingly, the gynecology for the moment is doing big, uh, big success because they had anyway very short hospitalization stay, a length of stay, but they decrease it further. So we have the possibility to work also for operation with shorter postoperative lengths of stay. And for the moment, for our own hospital, we have around 900 patients in the database. So the other implementation followed in 2012 in five uh, Swiss uh, teaching hospitals, 2013 six Swiss hospitals, and three hospitals in France, three academic center. We have good relationship, wanted to get the ERA system in. If we look at the audit system and the database, Ole Lundquist show you that before, where at the moment more than 10,000 patients for the, the entire system, it increased by almost 500 cases every month. We have more than 50 centers and the center in Switzerland and in France I did mention. So if I summarize the ERAS implementation, and you have heard that several times, this is teamwork. It is a complex organizational task, but it has to be done systematically. And you make that multidisciplinary, and we can never emphasize enough the importance of auditing your outcome, auditing what you are really doing. And of course, some aspects were mentioned before why it could not work. Julie uh, told us about that. Uh, because of old dogmas. So one has to fight the old dogmas. But on the other hand, one has to be cautious not to create new dogmas and not sounding too religious, no drain, no gastric tube, no bowel prep, no yes and so. And we have to have some flexibility and adaptation to the local uh, hospital we put that. So the ERAS implementation will decrease the surgical stress, complication, hospital stay, and cost, and you need a dedicated team. This dedicated team has to apply the ERAS protocol, they have to check the compliance that we are really doing what we think we are doing, and of course, with that, we have make an audit, and with this audit, you can not only make research, but also adapt your clinical pathway to your real results. And this is really multidisciplinary. A lot of people from various departments, 
and I hope uh, you were a little bit uh, convinced that this ERA stuff has something good uh, for the patient. Thank you very much indeed.